Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another special edition of the show. We've got a very special guest here today from the great New York band King Buffalo. Yes, band leader, founder, guitarist, vocalist, synth player, Sean McVeigh is with us today. Sean, how are you? I'm doing great. Happy to be here. I'm happy to have you. I've been wanting to talk to either yourself or anybody from the band for quite a bit. Uh, we've covered a lot of King Buffalo here on the channel uh, over the last year, whether you've seen or not. But uh, Dan has been talked about quite a bit. We've done a full album ranking. We've done reviews of the new CD as well. So I'm uh, very happy to have you on the show. And uh, I'm sure our viewers will be very interested to hear some of the things you have to say about the new album, about the upcoming next leg of the tour and all that sort of thing. So uh, again, thanks for thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, I've run into some fans at uh, at shows over the past year and there's people be like, hey, have you heard of Sea of Tranquility? And it's like, man, I haven't, but and he's like, yeah, they talk about you all the time. So uh, it's cool to be able to get to be here with you. Well, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Yeah. So you guys have uh, been around now for about a decade, but you know, over the last six years, you've been pumping out a lot of music, a lot of full length albums and some live stuff here and there. And your brand new uh, album, which came out not that long ago, uh, is Regenerator. And it kind of like continues on this uh, real busy work that the band has been doing since like COVID-19 hit uh, back in early 2020. Can you talk a little bit about the new album Regenerator and how it kind of continues on from what you guys started with like Asher on the Berlin and the Burden of Restlessness, which came out in 2021, which was a nice little flurry of activity for you last year and both really, really respected uh, releases in your catalog. And kind of where does this sit in the catalog now that you've got like a whole bunch of albums under your belt? Um, yeah, I mean, so. Uh, Burden, Acheron, and Regenerator were actually all, they all stemmed out of the same sort of jam session uh, when COVID hit and shut everything down. Um, so that we had initially, you know, they were all kind of written as sort of one, you know, sort of long arc. They're all part of the same sort of, uh, I don't know, creative uh, moment, right? Uh, they're all, they all sound quite a bit. Similarities there. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they all sound a little bit different, but also, you know, kind of trying to keep like there's some elements that repeat throughout some of the the, the three records is really we wanted them to be sort of a three part sort of anthology type thing. Um, and then Regenerator definitely is like sort of the capstone on on that uh, endeavor. Um, and it's, you know, we'll, it, was, it was a long time ago when we started writing it at this point um because you know we started this all in 2020 and we know we had initially had planned to release all of them in 2021 uh there were some uh delays as far as production delays and then actual like you know vinyl production uh things got hung up as um you know like every industry did during that time with shipping and manufacturing and stuff so things got pushed off so unfortunately we didn't get to release regenerator until uh september right in september of this year yeah and so yeah it was didn't didn't uh live up to our three albums in one year uh thing we did record them all though in that one year we just didn't get to get them all released gotcha so yeah and i, I don't want to kind of jump ahead but seeing as you basically you know talk about how this is almost like a kind of like a trio that goes together um, let's circle back later in the conversation about where you guys go from here now that you've done these three, right? But we'll, we'll, we'll get back to that. I want to talk about this uh, a little bit more. So for those folks who may not be familiar with your music, uh, and I, I'm going to kind of explain how I interpret King Buffalo, and then maybe you can kind of expand on that. So, you know, you guys on all of your albums, I mean, I'm talking, you know, I got all of them here. I mean, all this stuff is, is like it, this kind of like head on collision of like, psychedelic rock and space rock and prog and stoner doom and uh you know from track to track you guys totally mix things up that's why all of your albums to me are like so exciting to listen to because you don't stick in one kind of style for too long and like on this new album you got like uh you know regenerator mercury and hours is this kind of great like one two three punch to start off the album where you don't you have no idea where the band's going next and how i guess my question is how hard is it for you guys to come up with material that focuses so much on all these shifting and changing dynamics and 
you know, how do you keep that consistent from album to album? And is that hard to do when you're creating these, these records? Um, it's something that we've always kind of made a point of emphasis. Um, for a long time when we, we would constantly try to sort of one up ourselves and, you know, we wanted to try to make every record have some of the most quiet stuff we've ever done. And then also some of the loudest, most ridiculous stuff we've done. Um, kind of like stopped putting that much pressure <laughs> uh, but it's just something that's always come pretty naturally to us um me as a guitar player i i like playing with uh you know different levels of you know squeaky clean and then the super fuzzed out chaos and so kind of playing with all these different elements and kind of letting you know letting a a, a sort of a repeated simple riff grow and change with with the use of effects and dynamics it's kind of just always kind of been stylistically what i've been drawn to um and so you know 99 percent of our songs start off as jam sessions so that's like extremely you know when you're jamming on something for a long time it's it's kind of nice to you know it's more fun when there's dynamics to it and stuff so you're weird it's, it's just always been a point of emphasis um i don't know I don't know if I would say it's it's difficult for us at this point because it's been there from the beginning of like, you know, we want we've always wanted these moments um, in any particular song. Um, Just kind of it's the way you operate at this point. So and, yeah. and I can totally see that a lot of this is, stems from jam session beginnings, right? Because there there's this looseness to some of the songs, but then they go into all these different directions, which is where, you know, me as a kind of crappy part-time guitar player i i'm always like kind of like well that sounds like it was really structured there but maybe it's not i don't know but i guess if, if that's the style you guys are comfortable in and that's kind of the avenues that your that your uh sessions go in this is probably pretty normal to you as the creator of the music yeah and and you know um certain certain times you want to you know uh accentuate different things you know as the you know kind of the final ear on it you know as i'm as i'm producing stuff uh, some stuff is a little bit more, um, you know, I'll, I'll try to highlight different aspects of, of depending on what, what the song is. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just always kind of been the way we, the way we do it. We, you know, we, I don't, I'm not really like the, the shorter songs aren't the most fun to play, you know, like they, they, they're, they're, they're cool and we do like them, but like, you know, when you're jamming, you know, when you're, if you're in the middle of a jam session, you usually don't do like a four minute jam, right? You know, like right. you usually like, you know, and like all of these songs started off as like 30 minutes long, you know, and like out of that 30 minutes, you know, maybe seven of it is listenable. <laughs> you know, so like, um, and, and, but then also if you want to have a seven minute song be listenable, you better, you better have some dynamics in there. I, in my opinion, you know, yeah. otherwise it gets kind of boring. Yeah, I mean, your longer songs are great. I mean, but you, you guys approach things a little bit differently than, say, another band I like quite a bit, like Earthless. You know, Earthless will go and Isaiah, 15 minute long song. And of that 15 minutes, Isaiah is soloing for like nine of them, right? And so, whereas you guys are kind of, you know, you're using the synthesizers and big riffs, crystalline riffs, a uh, little, you know, all sorts of cool things, which I think is neat. And I guess like my, my next question is like, so you're basically like a power trio, but when you listen to these albums, it sounds like you got like four or five people creating all this, you know, this big wall of sound. So when you guys go and play live, how do you pull all this off? Uh, well, you know, that was again, another point of emphasis early from our creation is how can we make it sound like there's more of us in the band? Yeah. Um, without you know you know we don't use like um you know we don't we're not playing with backing tracks or anything at least at this point um live particularly like you know uh over the last handful of records really since dead star i've gotten more and more comfortable using a uh, looper live um so you know there are songs like cerberus that make heavy heavy use of of me just creating loops and and looping them live um which at first was really scary and it still always is a little bit because all it takes is one little thing to go wrong and all of a sudden you know you're in trouble <laughs> it can go very very wrongly very fast but um that's part of the fun about playing live is sort of like walking that tight rope um so yeah we use the you know we have a pretty standard 
a three piece rock band, you know, guitar, bass, drums. And then me and Dan both have uh, synthesizers that we either play with our feet or occasionally with our hands. Um, and then lots of use of uh, delays and reverbs and things to just stack on top to make it sound as big as possible. What kind of guitars and amps are you using these days? Uh, my main guitar has been um, my heavily modded Fender Light Ash Stratocaster. That's probably what I'm playing 99% of the time now, maybe 95. Um, and then my other guitar is a Hagstrom D2F, um, which has also been modified pretty heavily. Uh, amp is always just a Fender Twin. Um, I have a, I might be experimenting with that going forward, but uh, that's been my workhorse for, for years. Sticking with the classic, nothing wrong with that, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, for me, a little bit uh, trying to limit the amount of, uh, you know, rabbit holes I can jump down, you know, where the twin is like pretty simple. It's like it's on or it's not. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I, I uh, yeah, I, I don't, you know, it's not like a two, I don't change from like, you know, uh, I don't change between amps for like, uh, you know, driven and clean sounds or just like keep it all in one, keep it all on the pedal board and, uh, you know, try to eliminate as many, uh, barriers for failure as possible. I hear you. I hear you. So again, back to the album. Uh, just taking a look at a couple of the songs on here. So uh, "Mammoth" is one of my favorite songs on on the record, and it's it's got this big kind of brooding sound to it. And I think uh, as we hear a lot in your music, uh, you guys embrace kind of like those stoner and doom roots, but there's plenty of prog in there as well. Um, can you talk a little bit about some of your influences i mean because you can hear lots of little things in your music and I, I i'm curious as to like kind of what are some of the bands that got you into music back in the day that helped kind of shape what we now know as king buffalo uh probably uh the band that shaped me the most and got me from a really young age was pink floyd uh which i anyone who's probably listened to us is it's pretty, pretty Not obvious. surprising to hear you say that yeah. yeah um so yeah they they were definitely sort of my first uh, foray into into like what I really do now um, obviously I grew up listening to you know Black Sabbath Pink Floyd and uh, Zeppelin Hendrix you know all the sort of the great guitar rock bands of the 70s um, but I was also you know I was I'm 37 now so I was, I was growing up in the night late mid to late 90s and early aughts so I was into bands like System of a Down and you know Corn and Limp Bizkit and sort of like the newer metal stuff as well in there um, as I got older, uh, I was kind of experimenting with a lot of different kinds of music. I was, I was kind of more along the lines of sort of like Beatles inspired sort of, uh, indie rock sort of stuff for a long time. And then the band that sort of really changed things for me was Dead Meadow. When I first heard their, um, the, the first record, the self-titled one, um, it was like, oh wait, like people can do this like now, you know, and, uh, and it was super cool. And then that kind of, uh, sent me back to my roots a little bit and, and got me really into sort of, sort of riff oriented, um, just kind of having fun again on the guitar instead of trying to like craft, uh, you know, a song necessarily, uh, just, just having fun and fuzzy, goofy riffs. And, um, that kind of really cha changed my perspective and changed what I was doing musically and, and, got me back uh, to what I love to do most. Well, speaking of uh, big, fuzzy, goofy riffs, um, Firmament is the, the finale on the album. And to me, that's like your big guitar song on the album. I mean, the, the riffs are just tremendous. You get that that really lethal solo about three quarters of the way through the song. So what, what made you say, I, I like the way the album is paced. I mean, it's like, it kind of like takes you on a journey but it absolutely saves some of the heaviest moments for last. Was that done on purpose or just kind of the way it worked out? Oh, no, definitely. Um, you know, again, like uh, a lot of uh, thought and, and stress goes into making these decisions <laughs> decision. Um, and like, you know, the album was sequenced, like the, the lyrics weren't finalized and, and stuff like that, but the album was sequenced pretty early on, uh, you know, even around the time of starting, you know, burden tracking we had pretty much sequenced acheron and um uh, regenerator um and i knew you know i kind of felt like if we're trying to take it upon us to do this big three album mark thing if, if, you know you gotta have you gotta have an ending right it's gotta it's gotta feel like an end um and 
it's also the kind of thing where like you can't a song that ends that big you can't really put anywhere but the end right <laughs> like what do you what do you do after that you, you can't know? follow that right it's like <laughs> right. like what are you going to do to follow it that doesn't feel like super small it's just kind of hard to do it's so that it naturally sort of lends itself to being at the end um and that was an interesting one in general because firmament was actually the product of two completely separate jam sessions that like we had these two ideas that were you know we liked them and they were similar but they were different and, and they were done on different days and then uh we were initially going to try to make something out of both of them but in in doing that it just wasn't feeling right and i said what if we had tried smashing these two ideas together and then um uh, after some trial and error and and that sort of thing cutting stuff up moving things around we eventually ended up on what sort of became the structure of firmament um and yeah it was it seemed like it was it lent itself to being the last song on the, the that record and ca sort of capping off the the three albums it's a great closer it's a great closer so i i want to go back to acheron and I, i've had a question for you since i first got this and, and started reading the liner notes and i'm like they recorded this in how caverns now I live in the Hudson Valley, so I have been to Howe Caverns before, but not since I was a kid. It's been a long time, and I'm I'm a bit older than you are. Um, and I'm just sitting there thinking, how the hell did you guys pull that off? So could you talk a little bit about how that was set up and the, the whole story, the recording of it? Because I'm, I'm trying to picture it in my mind, and I can't because I haven't been there in so long. I'm thinking, that's like down below. I'm like, so how would you get all this shit down there? And like, what was that like? <laughs> um it was really difficult uh so <laughs> uh, we knew we wanted to do acheron in in live you know sort of format we knew we wanted to do it you know in one shot uh, on location somewhere we initially had a plan to go um we were gonna we were setting it up uh pretty early in cove and we wanted to go to california to do it we were gonna uh film it with some people there uh but with covid going on i was like dude we can't we're not gonna like get on a plane and no it's not happening so we're trying to figure out where we could do it um my drummer had been to how caverns with his family uh and he approached he mentioned it to us that he had this idea it's like you know i was there with my with my kid and my and my now wife and it's awesome and you know uh i think it could be cool i had never seen it i had never been there i'm like i don't know but i also like dumb uh challenges so <laughs> it's like sure like cool let's i don't know if you think it can work fine excuse me the audio engineer in me was definitely having like a panic attack immediately of just like i don't you know like going in sight unseen we're gonna make a record we're gonna bring a small film crew and we're gonna do all this stuff uh so scott our drummer went around went about uh contacting the people at how caverns and and you know going over like renting renting the space with them um part of the other reason we settled on doing it there is because it's deep enough underground that it's a con constant um uh, 52 degrees it's like so it, i think we filmed it in march and you know upstate new york in march not necessarily conducive to filming anything outdoors so hey we know there's not going to be snow we'll do it we'll do it there it's going to be fine um we get there there is luckily there's a very large elevator so we were able to freight everything down uh in, the, in an elevator but as soon as those doors opened up and you step foot out of the elevator you step into the most humid atmosphere i have oh, never yeah. experienced anything like it it was absolutely bonkers um so it was 52 degrees but all of a sudden you're sweating more than you've ever Wet sweated and damp. oh yeah. yeah and it was crazy like we brought with us some um like acoustic baffle panels in case we needed them and so we unloaded the elevator and they're there and within five minutes you could like push them and it was like like a sponge like water come out so it was like gotta get these out of here immediately otherwise they're gonna be totally ruined so we got them out and just said we'll go without them we'll just have to make it work and then we uh once we got down there we started sort of hiking around and scouting to see where we were gonna ultimately end up setting up and filming and making this record uh, we ended up settling on a spot that was pretty far away i don't know what the total we know it took um i believe it took 10 minutes to walk just to like walk from the elevator to uh like where we ended up setting up 
which doesn't really seem like that long, but when you have to hoof all of your gear that that far, there's staircases, there's you know, tight turns. It was difficult. Um, we ended up they they have like a large fan at the very end of the cavern, so they were able to suck out a bunch of the the moisture. We were able to set up. We picked a spot. We and we just kind of went for it. Um, we ended up going way past the time we rented the space for, so they were very accommodating we ended up you know uh we apologize profusely but you know there was nothing really that could be done we had some te technical difficulties it was chaos um it was the hardest thing i think we've ever participated in we did three takes of each song and then that was it That's and it. um that was the record <laughs> i could just imagine like the looks on the faces of the people at how caverns when you approach them about this they're like you want to bring a band down into the cavern to record music? Why? Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I think it's a cool idea. And that's just like, I, I've never heard anything. And again, I've been there, but I haven't been there probably since maybe 1980. So it's a long time ago. Uh, and I just remember then, and I'm sure it's much nicer now, but I, there, there's, I remember there's like how caverns and then like down the street, there's like secret caverns. They're both like in the same town or they were fairly close. And I remember secret cavern caverns was really like scary and not as like um, modern and modded as how caverns is, but still I'm just like, you know, the idea of bringing amps and equipment and electrical stuff down there is just like, whew, yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. I yeah. never want to make a record like that again. <laughs> <laughs> but the, but the end result is pretty damn terrific. I mean, you got to admit that, that, it came out really, really good. Yes, totally. Definitely was something we're very proud of. Um, I just would never recommend anyone does do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was uh it was it was certainly something that like extremely proud of, but um not itching to do that again. No, okay, I don't blame you. <laughs> so now that you've uh, finished these three albums off and you have, you know, like a, a sizable catalog, do you have like any one in particular that feels really special to you i know it's probably hard to say because they're all special but yeah um probably kind of kind of would probably between three of them and it would be burden regenerator and dead star um burden i feel like was a really uh uh difficult record for me to make just like this is my uh, personal favorite, just just so you know. Yeah. I, the regenerator I, I, is getting up there. <laughs> cool. Well, yeah, uh Burden of Restlessness, I was really like kind of working through a lot of like personal things and there so there's stuff in there that um was really scary for me to put out there. Um and took a lot of, you know, self reflection and, and was really that was the scariest record I've ever made. Um, so I'm really proud of that one. And that one, um, it always is kind of special for me. Um, regenerator, uh, sort of similar, but it's different in the sense that, um, it's, it's obviously a brighter record. It's a little more, uh, positive, um, which is not easy for me to do. Uh, <laughs> so trying to sort of break myself out of my comfort zone and sort of almost, um, uh, bring, you know, uh, trying to almost cheer myself up a little bit, you know, in the course of making that record again, kind of makes it stand, stand out and is, makes it special to me and dead star, just for the reason of uh, the experimental nature of the record. Um, uh, like I, the, 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 the title track on that is still one of my favorite songs. You've, we've never played it live or anything. Um, I just, I'm a big fan of it. So um, those would be the three probably. Well, that kind of then segues into circling back to what we talked about earlier. So now that you've, you know, done these three, which you mentioned are kind of like a trio uh, and you just, you know, basically said, and I agree with it, this is a little bit of a brighter record, maybe has some more accessible sounds to it. Where do you guys go next after this now? Do you have like that kind of vision yet or is it, that still waiting to happen? Uh, definitely still waiting to happen. Um, you know, there was a lot a lot of stuff we put out a lot of music in the past few years yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um you know definitely kind of want to take a step back and and sort of uh you know come at things a little fr come at things fresh you know with a little bit of a new perspective um so there's i have a couple little ideas that i've been noodling around with but um definitely have not 
had like writing put the writing hat on uh definitely just focusing on live stuff um and you know we'll get we'll we'll get back to writing probably sooner rather than later but you know kind of feel like uh we don't we don't really want to rush right back into it at this point um definitely want to try to you know come up with something you know i i always like to have some sort of what i feel is like a new sound idea feeling to focus on for for like a record um like dead star i the whole record is in an alternate tuning that i came up with for the record and so uh, i always like to try to have a different element to uh focus in on and i don't know what that is yet so <laughs> um yeah meanwhile all your fans are like no but we've gotten like all these albums in the last couple of years we want another one next year it's like well i think you know it'll happen when it'll happen right i mean that's, that's yeah yeah can't it's force funny. We got that quite a bit on uh, um and, and touring this past year uh you know in the in, the, in this fall we, we would you know run into fans and like oh so when's the next record coming out I'm like you know we just released four freaking records since 2020 <laughs> like come on like give me a break uh, everybody spoil now right yep. yeah yeah so um definitely we'll probably slow down a bit in our in our release schedule but um. That's, I don't know if that's a bad thing either. So you guys uh, have a style that's like kind of, it's, it's a very niche style of music, um, but it's, it's a kind of music that I think is really growing slowly, but growing in popularity. Like you're starting to hear a lot of people talk about the, the psychedelic music and, you know, psychedelic stoner, psychedelic doom, psychedelic progress, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and there's a lot of bands out there that are just coming out of the woodwork that are playing not like your style of music, but in a psychedelic vein, a very experimental vein that's still heavy, but yet progressive. So do you have any bands that uh, either you've come into contact with or you guys have toured with that uh, you feel would appeal to folks who like, you know, King Buffalo or who like Elder or who like Earthless or whatever? Any any other bands that come to mind? Yeah, uh, I mean, there's quite a bit. Um, we've been lucky... Uh, this year was the first time we've gotten to sort of bring bands on tour that, um, you know, we were, we were into, um, and I'm going to do a terrible job at remembering everyone right now, but, uh, Atsuko Chiba is a really cool band, really awesome, really awesome, long flowing songs with cool, uh, synth textures, um, Oganali is another band we toured with. They were fantastic. Um, uh, shoot, uh, Uh, rickshaw billy's burger rickshaw billy's burger patrol uh, great name yeah <laughs> um they're a little more uh like heavier a little more like i don't know sort of heavy meets primus like heavier primus there's there's some cool stuff there um i, mean, I know i'm forgetting a bunch of bands but yeah i mean you know like like you were saying like the right now it's funny you hear people say things you know like uh you know rock music is dead or whatever but you know i don't know like there's so many awesome bands all the time. You know, if you're like, Oh, I don't like new, new music anymore. It's like, well, you're not looking for it because there exactly. is something yeah. there for you. I guarantee it. Like there's never been a better time to find a, you know, in any genre, a, 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 an act that you like. Um, so uh, I don't know. I think it's a pretty cool time for music. I think um, it seems also that there's a, a bit of an emphasis again, on uh on like on touring and live performance which yep. is kind of where i think uh our genre um really kind of you know butters its bread is you know a lot of these these bands put on a really good live show um and naturally lend themselves to uh vinyl which you know you know v vinyl sales are, are are up they're they're great and um you know i think having it's sort of a return to sort of like album focused live show focused uh bands which i think you know is pretty cool so uh rock is it rock music is in really good hands i think right now it is it is and uh, you guys do a lot of stuff on Bandcamp, and i think the Bandcamp community is just growing and growing so you can go on Bandcamp to check out you know the king buffalo site there and yeah there you get all these recommendations to other cool like bands and whatnot and it's easy to go and experiment listen to the music and you know you have options to buy all different formats i think that's really really cool so uh yeah 
So I was just uh, I was just checking out your live dates before we started talking uh, for 2023, and I see you got a pretty extensive schedule. And uh, I know in the past you guys have done lots of dates around you know the upstate New York area, but now you guys are getting all over now. So what what is your? Uh, could you talk a little bit about uh, the U.S. and then you're going over to Europe next year as well, right? Yes. Um... I, I honestly don't know what we've announced yet and what we haven't. So, <laughs> um, but I do know that we are going to Europe um, and I believe in January, I, I'll be honest, I am the worst when it comes to know, to like knowing where we're going. I know the general chunks of days and then it's like, okay, I think, I think in January we're kind of doing Midwest, Great Lakes, maybe up to Minnesota and back. Yep. And in February, I think we're going to Florida and back. Um but, you get Vermont, Pennsylvania, New York, and I saw a bunch of this area, so to speak. Yeah, and then I saw Germany on there. And... Yeah, yeah. Um, we usually, yeah, Europe's definitely happening. We've uh, we we've been to Europe a few, several times now, um, and I do believe we are going back this summer or spring. I, I don't remember exactly when, but I do know it is going to be another busy year of touring, um, sort of making up for for the lost time there. Uh, during COVID. Yeah, I see on the calendar, I see uh, the Empire up in Albany, which is about an hour and 15 minutes from me. So that's, I could think, uh, middle of February. So I'm going to do my best to try and make that one. So hopefully we'll get to uh, meet in person, which would be kind yeah, of neat. great. You guys are thinking about set list or is it, how do you guys do that? Do you stick to the same set list for the whole tour? Is it something that kind of changes and bounces around? It changes. Um, you know, it's not super drastic and changes, but I, I write a new set list every night pretty much um i try to make it so that if you come to you know it, we have people that come and see us multiple times on, an, on a given tour you know especially if we're playing a couple cities close to each other and i never want someone to feel like they saw the same show twice um so there's always little things you know often in the course of a tour it will be choosing from the same sort of chunks of songs and then you know every night there might be a couple you know anywhere from one to three or four that are different from the night before and we'll change up the sequencing here and there but um it would probably be a little easier if we did the same set list every night but it also kind of helps to um to helps keep us fresh you know keep things a little yeah. interesting to, you know. and again i i like the idea of you know if if anyone was uh, crazy enough to want to see us on an entire tour that they wouldn't get the same show every night. <laughs> you know, I, I think, um, you know, we have, we have really awesome fans and the fact that anyone wants to take their hard earned money and, and time valuable time to come and hang out with us for a night. Um, I think the least we can do is always try to make sure we put on the best and, and uh, most different show we can every night. Cool. Well, that's that's what it's all about. I, I just had very similar conversation with James Labrie from Dream Theater yesterday, and uh, we were talking about how historically Dream Theater always do the same thing. They change the set list up. Uh, used to be night to night. Now it's, you know, each tour is something completely different. So you can go see the band on every tour and know you're getting a completely different show from the last time you saw. So that that's that's refreshing. And you guys probably do lots of jams and improvs in the middle of things, I'm sure, from night to night. So here and there, um, you know, there are certain spots in, in certain songs that we have kind of built that in um but it, it depends um you know we're not we're not up we're not like uh you know fish where it's it's <laughs> you know um but there there's some yeah uh there's some in there cool sounds good well i wish you all the luck on the uh the upcoming tour and hopefully you get to recharge your batteries a little over the holidays before uh you know getting in the car and or however it is you guys travel around you guys have a bus how do, how do you do most of the travel uh just in a van and a trailer yep so make it work right uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> sounds good so uh for those uh wanting to check out those tour dates you can head on over to the king buffalo website uh, everything is up there like i said i was just there recently and if you are interested in checking out any of these fine albums like i said you can go purchase and listen on their Bandcamp page and i believe everything was up there last i checked so uh but definitely definitely do not miss regenerator and spoiler alert uh this has made my top 15 albums of the year so stay tuned uh real soon guys because i'm doing a daily countdown uh sean so uh it's actually coming up in two days so awesome
Yeah. Well, thank so, you so much, man. It's been a pleasure to chat with you. And um, same here. Forward. And uh, it, thanks for coming on. And uh, thanks again for such great music. And uh, Regenerators, the latest from King Buffalo. Thanks to Sean McVay for spending some time with us today. And uh, visit us on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube all together all the damn time. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good one. Uh, for Sean, I am Pete. And we'll see you real soon here on Sea Tranquility. Bye-bye.